South Africa. Uh, flying in a, uh, not that little of a little plane. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty high, actually. Uh, flying in uh, Mike Murray's place to go do my rhino. My first leg of the big five. Pretty excited. Uh, having some chips on the way. Simba chips and salt vinegar. <laughs> My bad, that was upside down. So, Cappy, what do you think about this experience? Can you read this? Yeah, this is... Because you're going to need some where we're going. I am in South Africa, along with my dad and my trusty cameraman, Cappy. Hi, welcome to Youngblood. I'm your host, Mackenzie Sims. I may only be 14 years old, but I'm a lifelong hunter. I was born in February, and that year, my dad took me hunting. This is my TV show, and I hope you enjoy it. For this episode, we're going to be going to South Africa for one of the most exciting rhino hunts anyone could ever imagine. Mackenzie will be hunting with a dart gun for a 5,000-pound white rhino as they hunt for a darted animal on what is known as a green hunt, McKinsey will stalk within 30 yards of one of the most dangerous animals on the face of the African continent. It plays an important part because it gives us something back on the management. This allows us to generate some income from her, and then also it plays a valuable part in our management to give us uh, data on, on the rhino. And the beauty of it is, we hoping she'll be pregnant and produce another calf for us within the year, within the next six to eight months. Still. A lot of people also cannot afford to kill and a lot of people don't want to do a kill. For a lot of people to see that rhino get up is, is more important to know that they've played a, a, such a vital part in the management and probably in the future of, of having rhino around. Our objective is to be able to, to, to dart a rhino a minimum every two years that, that we can monitor stuff like uh, trace element deficiencies, uh, the growth rates. You know, for us at the moment, we've got yeah between 15 and 25 rhino. We're wanting to uh, push that up a little bit this year to, to, to yeah, because we've got all the structures in place to look after them. Um, but uh, I think that, that from a management point of view, you can't, you can't do it less than two, you should try and get around to them every two years. Although the numbers we've got now, you know, we don't do many darts here a year. We probably do two, three sometimes. So we, we, haven't, been, we, we haven't been using it as efficient a management tool as we should, but we will get to that. The cradle of humankind, the African continent offers a rich spectrum of life itself, and its incredible abundance and diversity of wildlife stands testament to that fact. The density and range of freedom afforded African animal species is unparalleled. 10 to 15,000 years ago, when North America lost some three quarters of its megafauna population, Sub-Saharan Africa lost only two types of these large animals. When ecosystems elsewhere were being driven to extinction, in Africa, they were being driven to diversity. And still, it remains a center of wildlife conservation. Many species have faced endangerment. These conservation efforts have sometimes ended in failure, but sometimes in triumph. However, like many African species, rhinos face a significant and rising threat. Poaching. Luckily at this stage we're not in a high poaching zone and we keep a very low profile. We don't have any fancy advertising on the main roads that we are game ranch, etc. We like to keep it as low profile as possible. Rhinoceros horns are believed to have medicinal value in traditional Asian medicine. And although no scientific data exists to back up such beliefs, rhino horns sell for more than $40,000 per kilogram on the black market. This slaughter is an ever-increasing threat to the modern conservation efforts which originally saved the species from extinction. Cows are killed while pregnant or still safeguarding their young. You know, we don't have, there aren't a lot of helicopters, they, the poachers are using helicopters and all these sort of things now. We don't have a lot of those down here at this stage yet. 
you talk to guys with game launches north of Johannesburg, I mean, the one guy was telling me every 30 minutes they hear a helicopter going over their ranch. Now, if we hear a helicopter once a month, then we pick our ears up. Poachers are an organized efficient force comprised of ex-military, experienced criminals, and even veterinarians. Modern poaching takes place often in high-tech aerial assaults by helicopter, designed to quickly spot and kill their targets, and just as quickly flee the scene with their contraband. As, as far as a, a ranching perspective in, 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 in South Africa, which is, is, is the most sophisticated country um, on the continent, we are still fairly isolated, uh, and hopefully it stays that way.